All right, hey, it's Joe Ferro with Geek Toolkit, and I have a number of things I want to talk about in this video. If you're part of the Patreon, this is going to be the announced video for the August update. If you're not part of the Patreon, if you're on my YouTube channel and you're a subscriber and you've seen my past Dynaframe Pro videos, then this is a update of what's going on with the Patreon. The reason I'm doing this this way is I realize I haven't really updated the YouTube channel with what's going on with Dynaframe. I've been updating the Patreons like crazy, but the actual YouTube channel hasn't been taking updates and there's a lot to say there. So what I'm going to do is one video to talk about both. Now, this is Dynaframe Pro and this is the Patreon only release. So if you want to hold this software, I'll put the information in the description to tell you how to get it. And also I'll link back to the old video in case you haven't seen it before. What you're looking at here on the right hand side is what we call the instructions page. On the left is the web UI and uh, the, me on the left. Uh, I have moved and so I don't have all my fancy equipment. So this is how I'm filming this. Basically, it will be a nice way though because you can see everything that's going on. Um, I'm using webcams though, so maybe a little blurry. I apologize for that. I'll do the best I can with what I have. Now, the first thing I wanna show is I wanna talk a little bit about the features that have been added to Dynaframe Pro to really talk about like what has what has happened in the last couple of months here. And then we'll get into the August release features. Now, one of the things that happened was uh, animated GIF support here. So let's see, I'm gonna to go to my pictures and go to let's see GIFs. All right, so I'm just gonna take these and drag them over here. And you see, you know, this is our web upload system. It's uploading them and then boom, automatically, we already have one playing. That responsiveness is something that's coming in the August release. Uh, that, that quickness that we didn't have before. That was a lot of work done by myself and Lou, the main devs on this. And then also we've got Quicksilver who's doing a lot of the work on the Discord. So that's something else that's happened is we have a Discord now for support for people sharing ideas, sharing videos, builds, and so on. Um, this is anime GIF support. It actually supports transitions and fades. Uh, it's not 100%, but it is in there. It's been the number one thing that people have asked for, and we've done the best we can with it. So uh, some things that, you know, some files you find are absolutely beautiful and perfect, and they look really, really good. This is an example of one of those. You do get the crossfade and all of that kind of behavior. So that works really well. It's something we don't have in video yet, so. All right. <clears throat> Uh, we do have volume control now. That was something that was added. That's uh, great for the video engine if you're playing video with audio. Let me talk about what that looks like here. This section has been entirely rewritten. The video settings, uh, not only does play audio with video work really great now with that volume control, so you have settings there instead of just like on or off, but you can actually play back full videos. This is a huge feature request people have asked for saying, I want to be able to play back, you know, seven minute videos, but I want to have a slideshow transition of one minute. No problem, you can do that now. Now, report, repeat short duration videos is great if you have something that is like, you know, five seconds and you have a one minute transition. It will now repeat that video over and over if this is on. Now, if you have a 30 second video and you don't want it to repeat, you just want it to go to the next, we do that as well. And so this matrix has been a lot of what we've been working on in August on the rewrite is getting the video working long videos, short videos, um, video transitions, whether these are on or off, all of that should work now. We had quite a few bugs that we worked through. Zoom to fill is a new feature. This is another one from our coder, uh, de uh, our, sorry, developer Lou. Zoom to fill will take a, a video that's like horizontal and stretch it to fill a vertical screen. And that actually works. I'm sorry, it won't stretch, it'll scale it, it'll zoom it in. And that works really well, uh, a lot better than I expected. And it's been surprising to see how many videos look really good like that. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of videos are filmed with the subject in the center anyway, so you're just basically scaling them up to fill a screen. But a very, very cool feature, especially for the web videos feature I'll talk about later. Next thing I wanna talk about is uh, APIs. I wanna just kind of blast through this. I can always answer questions in the Patreon or uh, basically in the, in the questions here. So I'm gonna go through this really fast. We have a ton of application programming interfaces known as APIs. These are great for developers. And let me just switch this playlist over to something different here. There we go. And what happens here is you can call these over HTTP. That means if you're a home assistant person, 
and you can call an HTTP call or if you want to do it through Node Red or if you just want to use Serial or if you're a developer, any of those you can control so much about the engine. I'm going to walk you through it really quick and I'll show you a demo of how it works. So basically you're going to pass the API, the command, and then the value. We have stuff for turning the screen on and off, setting the info bar to be like date, time, or whatever you want to do. Shuffling if you want to turn that on and off. Also all of your play controls, forward, back, next, and so on. The volume level is available. Basically anything in the web UI is available through this control system. You can also set the info bar. You can actually pick which file is played next or uh, play directly. If you want to have it play a certain file, you can do that. So now you have a web controlled uh, frame, which is very powerful. You can also play a, a file from the internet. So if you have a file uh, like a JPEG file or something you want to play on the frame, you can do that as well. This will be great for the plugin authors, which is where we're going with this next. But for August, these are the APIs that will be available. You can code something outside of this to control your frame remotely. Uh, showing a file from the web, showing a video from the web. Now, I'm going to show you a demo of that. First, let me show you what, what, what the uh, APIs look like real quick. Uh, before I get too excited and jump to the video demo, which is like amazing. Um, so this one right here, this is the IP address command equals screen state, which is how you turn it on and off and then value equals true. That means on. If I say false here and hit enter, boom, screen turns off. It's that fast, that, that responsive. And if I switch it over to true and hit enter, the screen's gonna come back on. Now that'll be a little bit slower because it's gonna do this beautiful fade in on the, on the coming on, uh, which is really nice. So that is an example. You would just basically put this in a serial or whatever you wanna do and you can control that however you want. Now there's an experimental page here. This is another section that's new. Um, this allows you to do a number of things. One is you can show a web page. When you click show web page, the uh, basically whatever showing will disappear. Now I want to do a quick disclaimer. I don't know if I, I said this earlier. I need to say it now though. I am not running on a Raspberry Pi. I'm running on development hardware. The reason being is number one, Raspberry Pis are hard to come by. And so we're trying to figure out ways to get it on other hardware. Uh, number two, if you're a commercial customer, we're probably going to recommend commercial hardware for you versus the Raspberry Pis, which have been really expensive and hard to get a hold of. So. I just want to say that because the performance of what you just saw is a bit slower in Raspberry Pi. Not too much, but it is slower. What you're looking at is a web page um, on, on Dynaframe. So this is, you know, I just passed an HTTP uh, page here. This is a open processing page and it's rendering basically 3D. This is being generated in JavaScript and shown on this web page. What's cool is this isn't a video anymore. This isn't a GIF. This is actually happening in real time right now, which is kind of exciting. It's kind of cool. It's a different way of doing artwork. And open processing, if you browse it, there's a lot of cool stuff out there that you could put on your frame, as long as you don't go too CPU intensive. The Raspberry Pi is a bit anemic still. The other thing you can do with this is, you can imagine again, if you're a Home Assistant user, you want to show your dashboard up on your frame really quick, or if you have a security camera and you want to show that on your frame and it has a web page behind it, you can now very quickly switch it. And then when you're done, you hit that button and it switches off that fast. So the load up is a little, takes a little bit of time, but switching off is no problem because Dynaframe never actually exited. It was just there the whole time hidden. Um, okay, so play web video. Oh, automatic mode. I need to talk about automatic mode first. Automatic mode means that the engine is always going in the background and choosing the next image. If you wanna play a three hour video of a beach scene, you don't want the engine going. So we have the ability to turn that engine off and that allows you to take full control of the frame and decide what plays next. Now play web video, you see here, I'm passing a YouTube video. We actually can pass YouTube, Vimeo. Uh, I've done Facebook public videos. There's like a hundred suppliers of videos uh, that this engine supports. <clears throat> and so when you click, when you click play web video, it goes out there, it grabs the video, it downloads it to the device, it transcodes it so that when the video actually plays, it's going to be uh, very performant when it when it actually shows up. So let's see here. I am curious where it's at. It might be down. Oh, it was downloading. Okay. So here's the web video starting and you can see that now when the video plays, it plays as a local file because it's been downloaded and cached. And so now you get really great video performance. You don't have to worry about like your internet going out or stumbling or anything like that. 
Um, this is just a, the most performant way to do it on a Raspberry Pi, really. You, you know, you're kind of limited by the computer you're working on, and we chose Pi 4. Speaking of, the Pi 3Bs now work. Uh, Lou has done some magic there. Not only do they work, but they are very performant. Um, they're not as good as the Pi 4s, but they're definitely usable now, which is great. We've cut the memory usage way down and figured out little tricks to get Pi 3s working. So I know Pis are hard to come by. If you have a Pi 3, you can go get up and running now. One more feature I want to talk about. This came from Quicksilver Other Dev. Uh, this is a store. Now, the store I've shown before, but the store was only for images before. You can actually update the entire engine now using the store. So on the Patreon, we will ship out codes for the new updates and betas. That way you can get in on the new stuff if you want and um, or if you want to stay stable. We have that ability now. And you put the code in the store, you hit say go, and this is a progress bar that will show you when it's done. When it is, you hit this run button and it basically restarts. And when it restarts, it will start the new build very, very quickly on that build starting. The download can take a little bit. I mean, it, you know, they're kind of big builds, but that restarting pretty quick and you're on the new software without it, it re-imaging a Pi, without uh, losing all your videos and images, without having to reset up your settings. So very excited about that feature that came in and that will all be in the August release. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank the YouTube subscribers for subscribing and supporting me, the great comments, the suggestions. A lot of them have made it in. We're still working on the other ones. We'll constantly be working on this, making this software better. I want to thank all of the Patreons, especially uh, you've made a dream come true for me. I really was on the fence on if I was going to be able to continue this and you have given me enough support to make this a thing that is viable and I can continue and invest in um, and take it in places I never thought I could. So very, very thankful for all of your help and support. I'm Joe Farrow, Geek Toolkit, and more videos will be coming. They'll probably be in this weird, you know, OBS format, but uh, I have some cool content coming. Uh, more lasers, more home automation. I'm gonna do some home automation in this apartment because I am determined to. So I'll do a video on that. I think that'll be fun. Thank you, everyone. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. Until next time.